Um, once more, I want to say it's an honor for me, and that's my prayer every day when I'm preparing for the message, that God uh, help me. I don't want to get used to the pulpit. I don't want to find myself coming to the pulpit unprepared because it's something that I think I have been doing it. And I want to thank God that even this morning, uh, I'm still feeling a bit nervous because what I'm going to say, what I'm going to share, it's a challenge also to me. So when I'm going to say something here that is challenging, don't think that I'm saying that because I've already achieved it. I'm saying this because the Lord has been challenging me and is also challenging us as the church. Hallelujah. So I'm preparing you that if I say something that offend you a little bit, it's not me, it's the Bible. And uh, just, just know that that's, unfortunately, we cannot only preach the soft messages about glory, hallelujah. From time to time, we must uh, teach you something that will challenge you. And I believe that this morning is not an exception. We're going to speak about something that is also passionate. I'm very passionate about things. For in case, if you don't know, my two English, favorite English words, the first one is choice. Because I just realized that as, a, as human beings, we've got a lot of cho choice to make. Every day you choose whether to come to church or not to come. You choose what to wear and you choose what to eat, where to go. So choice is just a magic word for me. And you also have the choice to be angry and not to be angry. If somebody says you are ugly, you choose to take it or to reject it. So if you, I just like the word choice. Let me stop there. The second word that I'm just passionate about, it's part of the topic today, is the word growth. If there's something that really makes my world go upside down and I enjoy it, it's when I see growth. When I plant something and I see it growing up, I just feel good. No wonder this year, uh, for the first time, we enjoyed uh, our narkis. I think we planted it three, four years ago, and then it was just taking its time. But this year, it just showed us that, no, the water that we were putting, putting there, it was not in vain, and then we enjoyed it. So I enjoyed uh, reaping fruits like that. And then there is another tree that I planted the same time as that narki. It's misbehaving, and uh, I... <laughs> Uh, I think if next year it does not show any fruits, I will have to use an X. Otherwise, we cannot continue to do business together. Uh, so growth, I, I really enjoy growth. So the topic of this morning is spiritual growth. Uh, I'm going to talk about spiritual growth. Like I said, it's going to challenge us. And uh, I believe that by the grace of God, God will help us. Let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time. We're going to talk about spiritual growth. We've prepared a lot of messages, I mean of verses. We thank you, Father God, that it's not what we say that matters, but what you say through us. And even this morning, Mary God, you know the hearts of your people. You know who is here. You know who want to hear this. You know what we are going through. And I want to thank and believe you and trust you, Lord, that as we continue to humble ourselves, teach us something. At the end of this message, let us say we have learned something. And I believe that, Father God, by your faithfulness, by your goodness, you're going to do that for the glory of your name, for your name to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me just remind everybody uh, that um, there is what we call the Trinity of God. Uh, God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we know that we are created in the image of God. Uh, we have the body, we have the soul, and we have the spirit. Hallelujah. So when we talk about the body, is the one that you see. When they say so-and-so has passed on, they are uh, referring to the body, that the body is no more, it's going to have to, it's no longer alive. Um, I'm just going to summarize this because I just want us to have this background. And then when we talk about the soul, it's usually our mind, our will, and our emotions. And then we always talk that we renew our mind with the word of God. Uh, we know Romans 12 verse 2 that renew your mind with the word of God. And then we also know that our body... You, you can exercise your body, you can eat healthy food to nourish your body, but there is one element that we like forget, 
and that is the spirit. And today that's why I want us to emphasize on the spirit. As much as the body starts, the, the day one where you were born, you are one day old, you become one year old, they celebrate the birthday, even here in the, here in the churches we celebrate the birthdays. But I realize that few of us actually take time to say, now that I've been in the Lord for the past 10 years, uh, am I growing spiritually? I mean, physically, we are growing. We can see your hair is getting gray. We can see that you are starting to have some uh, not-so-smooth face and all those kind of things. That is showing me growth uh, bodily. And sometimes we can see that you no longer walk as fast as you used to be because it's part of growth and it's part of what is happening to your body. But let me tell you, I want us to talk about the aspect that I, I, I said sometimes we just take it for granted. The spiritual growth. Let's read from the book of... Um, let's just start from, book, uh, from the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Uh, that will be a good way to start. Luke chapter 2. It's in the New Testament, just after Mark and Matthew. Okay, another verse that also goes hand in hand with that one, it's also in the book of Luke chapter 2, now verse 40. We'll go to verse 52, but let's read. It's talking about Jesus here. They said, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the Lord of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. Now verse 40. And the child, they're talking about Jesus, and the child grew. Oh, Jesus also had to do the growing up. The child grew and became strong. Jesus grew up and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Let's read verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with men. Hallelujah. So, like I said, we're going to talk about spiritual growth. Here we see that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. Stature, the talking about bodily growth, like, uh, and then in favor with God and men. I want to say, my brothers and sisters this morning, that as much as we need food to grow physically, as much as we need nourishment to grow physically, as much as we need education to grow, uh, to, to grow our intelligence and our mind, we also need to put effort to grow spiritually. Let me tell you, you are not going to grow spiritually automatically. There's something that you have to do. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. How, what can we do to grow spiritually? When you look at yourself, where you were three, four, five years down the line, and where you are now, when you try to put one and one, are you seeing some growth? You are the best person to answer that question. Hallelujah. If you don't see some growth, let me tell you, this is the challenge. This is the challenge for yourself to say, no, I don't want to remain. Because if you don't grow, it means you are stagnant. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes I ask myself, man, I, I, I must say this. I ask myself, there is a word that we use that says childish. I ask myself, well, when is this person going to grow? You look at the person, is looks very old, but is still behaving childish. I'm saying to you as the children of God, as children of God, we cannot afford to remain like little children. We cannot afford to remain like babies. You know babies, they are easily offended, they are selfish, they are all those kind of things. But as a child of God, we have to reach a stage where one can say, I, if you did this five years ago, I would have sought you out. But now, because of maturity, because I'm growing, I now understand that violence does not solve problems. Hallelujah. 
people must actually come to you and ask you, now you are different, man. You used to be like this person. But now what happened? And when they ask you such questions, they give you the opportunity to minister to them, to share with them that I couldn't have done it by myself. It is because of the Jesus that I've accepted. Hallelujah. Now I'm just going to quickly move from uh, one verse to another that will just show us how, what can we do to grow. Let's go to the book of Psalm chapter 1. Uh, that's a very common scripture. Psalm chapter 1. We're going to read verse 3. Psalm chapter 1 verse 3. You know that even when I say verse 3, uh, I will start it from verse 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Verse 3. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. The wicked, they are something else. I just want to, to, to remain here. If you want to grow, just like a tree, check. The, the good thing about us is we've got the choice. You can choose where you are planted. You are supposed to be a, like a tree that is planted by the streams of water or the, by the riverside. That always gets water frequently. Hallelujah. I want to emphasize, and by the grace of God, I believe that you will hear what, I'm, what my cry is. You cannot bear fruits. You cannot go, grow spiritually if you isolate yourself from the nourishment of the word of God. Hallelujah. When they say a tree planted by the streams, make yourself to be in a place where you are always getting the water. Don't stay in a dry place. Don't find yourself in a desert alone. Don't isolate yourself. Hallelujah. Hey, when you are a tree planted by the streams of water, you yield fruits in season. Another thing that will show that you are growing, just like my narki, I didn't expect it to bear fruit the first day. But over time, with the nourishment, with the water, with the sunlight, it grew and it became at a stage where it was able to bear fruit. Same applies with us as children of God. If you have just repented today, we cannot expect you to be knowing everything. We cannot expect you to be able to close in prayer, to be able to share this and do this and that. But with time, my brothers and sisters, we expect to see some fruits from you. I always say this, and I'm going to say it again, that uh, Peter, James, and John, they were in the inner circle of the ministry of Jesus. Amen. Don't remain in the outer circle. There is this uh, uh, song that, that I heard. Uh, I'm not very good with languages. But they say, How will you get it if you're always at the corner? If you are always trying to hide, my brothers and sisters, if you want to get it, if you want to get this growth, man, get closer. Avail yourself. Ask questions. Attend uh, things. Hallelujah. Have that hunger. The word of God says, blessed are those, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you want to grow spiritually, have that hunger. To say, I want to understand the word of God better. I want to understand what is happening here better. Be that kind of a person that we, we can see. I mean, fruits is not something that you have to, 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 to say to the people that, hey, I'm, I'm bearing a lot of fruit. You don't have to say it. People will see. They say the people will know that you are mine when you love one another. Love is a fruit. Hallelujah. 
like I said, from time to time, you may find that I'm trending on your cons, but let's, let's just move together. Hallelujah. It starts by saying, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Uh, this, this scripture, we know it. We were taught many, many times. Show me your friends, I will tell you what kind of a person you are. F uh, Corinthians 15.33 Do not be mocked, bad company, corrupts, good character, good morals. My brothers and sisters, if you want to grow, see who is your friend. You cannot be going around with nobody's people that are always corrupt, taking you backward, doing all bad things and you, you think you are going to grow. Check who you are also spending a lot of time with. If you spend a lot of time with gossipers, you will end up gossiping. If you spend a lot of time with liars, you will end up being a liar. I mean, it just goes automatically. Hallelujah. So if you want to grow, this is simple. Check somebody who is like spiritually matured to you. I mean, compared to you. Somebody who seems to understand these things. Associate with them. Ask them, how do you make it? How, how, how did you get where you are? And I'm telling you, soon and very soon, soon and very soon. I remember, sometimes I don't want to give example with myself, but th this one, I have to, 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 to give it. I remember when I was still a small boy, I had a cousin, uh, when we had conferences, who was playing keyboard. And then usually during Easter holidays, we will have conferences. And I was that young boy. When my big cousin was playing the keyboard, I would sit here. And then we'll go for lunch and what, what, what. When we come back, I will sit here. Let me tell you, it didn't take me time before I knew how to press one, two, three. But if I was far away there, I wouldn't even know what... Because I would look, okay, he's pressing, okay, he's going, okay, no. Then soon and very soon I realize, it's like this young man is interested. That's how we learn. I don't want to say this, but let me say it. If you're in a company and you want to be promoted, you cannot associate with those people that are like down, down, down at the lowest level. You, you, you will learn very little things from them. But if you try to associate, let me say just you are in level two and there is level three and level four. Then the more you associate with those that are higher than you, the more they sometimes give you responsibility that, you know, man, I'm not going to be here next week. Will you mind to supervise one, two, two, three? And you do it before you realize it, there is a post. And they realize that you've been helping. So it's easy for you to move from two to three. Unlike somebody from one, I'm just giving that example for you to understand. Hallelujah. There is nothing wrong about being ambitious in the things of God. Yeah, it reminds me of my, uh, what is my brother-in-law. Uh, he was always coming to church. He was always coming to church. And then the other day, uh, this other pastor realized, ah, this guy has been coming to church for quite some time. And then it was time to say, let's close. Can somebody close for, for, for us in the word of prayer? And then they took the microphone to my brother-in-law. He said, Mr. Masia, uh, close for us. That was the last day they saw him in church. Uh, uh, uh. Um. Fortunately, here we don't do things like that. Uh, the pastor of that church thought, ah, this guy has been coming, ah, he, he won't mind. He thought this guy is maturing. When, uh, the more he's hearing other people praying, the more he's also saying, hey, one day I will also pray. Can't he? It was not like that. But let's forget about that. Let's continue to talk about growing. I, I'm, I'm going to say this uh, because... The word of God, there's a lot of growing that happens in the, in the scriptures. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. Good. Good. 
This is Paul speaking to the church in, to the Thessalonians. Yeah, this was Paul speaking to the Thessalonians. Maybe let's also read it from verse 1. To the church of Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now verse 3. This is Paul speaking. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith, listen to this, your faith is growing more and more, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I just like the church, uh, the, the, the church of, Thess of the Thessalonians. They were growing in their faith. Their faith was growing. We cannot afford, man, not to have our faith growing. How do we get our faith growing? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, when we come to church every Sunday, when we attend home cells, when we have fellowships, Bible studies, wherever we are, when we have prayers at our homes, we are not wasting time. Our faith is growing. Hallelujah. Our faith is growing. And before we realize it, our language changes. Because you cannot be a man of faith and speak something that is of defeat. When your faith grows, you begin to speak like a man of faith. When people say things are impossible, you say, no, they are possible. Because there's nothing impossible with God. Hallelujah. Another thing is, uh, uh, your faith is growing more and more, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Hey, there are some people that are just difficult to love. You try to do this, the do something else. You try to help, they don't even say thank you. But the word of God is saying that when our faith is growing, it gives us that love that we cannot understand. And let me tell you, the love for each other must continue to increase. If there is a prayer that we have to make as the church every day, let our love continue to grow. Love for each other. Because when you love somebody, you cannot backbite them. You cannot gossip about them. You cannot lie to them. You cannot wish them bad things. Hallelujah. The message of this morning wants us to grow spiritually. And this is one of the areas where we have to grow. Hallelujah. When we grow... When our faith grows, we understand that as children of God, Paul said that we walk by faith and not by sight. Hey, sight will deceive you. You will see things as if it's just gloom and doom. But when you go by faith, you don't concentrate on what you are seeing. You know you trust God. Hallelujah. You say there may be a mountain before me, but I'm trusting you. And I know that you are faithful. Hallelujah. A lot of things, I mean, a lot of us know that there are magnifiers, magnifying glasses. They, they make things to be big. Even a small thing, they make it to look big. But there is opposite of magnifiers. We call them minifiers. Minifiers, they make everything look small. Let me tell you, when you are a child of God, when your faith grows, when you look at problems and challenges, you look them through a minifier. They become very small. When you look at God, you see a big God. And you realize that there is nothing that God cannot solve. Hallelujah. I'm just going to quote this scripture. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 and Luke chapter 4 verse 4. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. If you want to go, grow spiritually, have time to read the word of God. Have time to enjoy reading the word of God. We are living in the time where, unlike way back in time, I remember there was a time where, I can't remember, I think I was doing matric or so. When you want to listen to a person like Joyce Meyer, probably there was five minutes from SAFM between half past five and 25 to five. If you miss that, it's gone. 
But these days we've got YouTube. You, anytime you can just uh, uh, browse there and listen to powerful men of God. Let's take that advantage. As a matter of fact, we are supposed to be stronger than the generation before us and the people that were born in the 1950s and who lived during those times. Now you can nourish yourself with the word of God. Just now, in our cell phone, you've got the whole Bible. As a matter of fact, you can even have a lot of versions in one phone. Hallelujah. If you don't understand it in the New International Version, you can go to the King James Version. If you want something that is simplified, you can go to the message. You can go to the good news. All those kind of things. The people before us didn't have those, those kind of luxury. Hallelujah. Let's live in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Uh, I like what David says. Psalm chapter 27. Verse number three. No, verse number four. Psalm chapter 27, verse number four. It says one thing. Sometimes when I read scriptures like this that say one thing, I really want to ask myself, it means this is the most important thing. David said, of all the things, one thing I ask of the Lord. Hey, I ask myself, it means if David, if there is just one thing that you want to ask of the Lord, if the Lord says, ask one thing, this is what he said. One thing I ask of the Lord is that, and that will I seek. This will mean effort. When you seek something, it means you don't sit down and fold your, 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 your arms. You, you, you make effort. One thing that will I seek is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Dwelling in the house of the Lord speaks about the presence of the Lord. Hey, my brothers and sisters, you cannot grow spiritually if you don't yearn to be always in the presence of the Lord. Don't allow the sun to go by without closing your eyes and thank God and pray and communicate with him and have that relationship with him our god is good when we speak to him he speaks to us hallelujah when he as when we ask he give he says you don't have because you don't ask my brothers and sisters david said one thing that i ask is that i may dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life every day we know this psalm chapter 23 verse 6 surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's David speaking. And he said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, let's dwell in the house of the Lord. Let's not grow weary in doing the good things. Let's not be discouraged. When we come to church on Sunday, sometimes we, we, we feel like not coming. But let me tell you, when we come here, this place this is the house of the Lord. There is the presence of the Lord here. Hallelujah. Let's have this fellowship. Let's encourage one another. Let's pray for one another. If there's something that's bothering you, let's share. Get somebody that is matured that you can trust and tell them, my brother, I'm struggling with this and this. Pray for me. That's what brothers are for. Hallelujah. When we listen to the worship songs together here, when we praise the Lord, God is faithful. Hallelujah. One thing I ask of the Lord is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. That's where we get our spiritual vitamins. That's where we get our nourishment. That's where we get direction. When we are a family like this, when, you are go when we're doing something wrong and you've got a true friend, they will come to you and say, my brother, I think this is wrong. What you are doing is not right. But when you are isolated, when you are all by yourself, that's why I said that the, the, the mistake that you must not do, we always also tell the teenagers, when you go to the university or when you go to the college, the first thing that you must do, ask where are the Christians, where are the churches. Don't think you will make it alone. It does not matter how strong you were here. If you isolate yourself, it's like when we are making fire. The more we put wood there, 
the more fire becomes strong. But as soon as you remove one wood and put it aside, even when that, those other woods are burning, that one alone, before you realize it, that the wind will quench it and it will die. Hallelujah. So we need each other. Uh, I want to conclude by saying that Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Yeah, this will be our last scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Okay, it reads as follows. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. You know, when you are firm, you are not easily moved by things. When we, we see that you are growing spiritually by the firmness, you are not easily moved by hearsays. You don't just hear somebody saying, hey, I heard somebody saying this, this about you. Then you said, no, no, no. Like I told you about, uh, you, 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 you don't just get moved. They say when you want to see how strong the tree is, you see it after storms and the winds and everything. If it remains standing, then it's strong. Okay, stand firm. Let nothing move you. My brothers and sisters, there are things that will be meant to move you, even in the church. There are things that will be meant to move you, even in your family. There are things that will be meant to move you, even at your workplace. Let nothing move you. You know the problem that we have? We try to fight the battles that do not belong to us. I like the scripture that... Cast your burden unto Jesus for he cares for you. Let nothing move you. And then this is what I want to say. Always, not sometimes, always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, this is the question that I have. Are you giving yourself fully to the work of the Lord? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Hallelujah. People are very cruel. Man. People can tell you that, come and work for me, do this, 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 this. When you have done everything, they run away. Or they don't pay you what you agreed. But let me tell you, with the Lord, our labor is not in vain. When you come to church, when it's raining, when you pray, when you don't feel like praying, when you give, when you don't feel like giving, my brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God is watching you. God is watching you. It's just a matter of time. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, after this message, this message was not to condemn us, but this message was to encourage us that let us give ourselves fully, not part-time, fully in the work of the Lord. Let's support each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's pray for one another. And by so doing, you know one thing that I like about this, when you pray for somebody to be blessed, there is no way they can be blessed and you don't get blessed. In their blessing, when they are getting their blessings, those blessings will also flow to you. Hallelujah. So let's, let's keep on praying for one another. Let's keep on encouraging one another. And let's see, let's make it a point. Let's study the word of God. Let's pray. Our labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. And to show that we are growing, it will show by the fruit. We, 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 we preached on Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Ask yourself sometimes, just ask yourself, as far as love is concerned, am I 60, 40%? Okay, joy. 
am I joyful? If you find yourself always angry, you don't have peace, probably that's the, you must ask yourself, am I nourishing, am I growing spiritually? Am I nourishing myself? Am I like a tree that is planted by the riverside? Hallelujah. It's not too late. You can take the decision. And I, like I said, the choice is on you. You can remain where you are or you can say, Father God, one thing I ask is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time that we had. We, we, we just want to thank you for your word that has been talking us about growing spiritually. And there are brothers and sisters here, after listening to this word, they may realize that it's like I've been stagnant for a long time. Father God, we pray that give them strength, give them courage to stand up, to be firm, to give themselves fully to your work. In the name of Jesus, you know how. And Father God, we don't have to prescribe how they have to do it, but we thank you, Father God, that you're going to give them. In Jesus' precious name, we pray, Mary God, we thank you. Before we started with this message, we were praying that the, the, the scripture that says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, I will hear them and I will heal their land. Father God, even this morning, you know we need healing. We continue to pray, mighty God, that give us grace, give us strength to continue to know that with pride, we cannot go anywhere. We are continuing to humble ourselves even this afternoon and say, Father God, that let this be a continual thing that we do to just know that without you we are nothing. But we also remind ourselves that with you we can do everything. With you we are more than conquerors. The word of God says, humble yourself by the side of the Lord. He will lift you up. We thank you, Father God, that you're going to lift us up from depression. Lift us up from oppression, from addiction, from low self-esteem. Lift us up from grumbling, from complaining. And Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.